Stray has one of the most immediate and distinctive hooks in recent video game history. You play as a cat. This simple statement alone is enough to onboard many new players, based solely on mankind's love for these little furballs. As it turns out, people love their pets. There's a strong familial bond that's so easy to develop with our furry companions. Over time, we come to view our pets as members of our families and important contributors to our overall well-being. After all, who hasn't cuddled up with their dog or cat after a bad day only to feel that stress wash away as a wet nose touches you or a purring sound is heard? We cherish and love our pets while they're with us and mourn them when they leave. That universal sensation is what allows Stray's tagline to be so attention-grabbing. Playing as a cat? Well yeah, sign me up. With that being said, there was danger lurking within such a simple premise. Controlling a feline friend sounds great on paper, but if underdeveloped, this novel idea would surely get stale quickly, perhaps within minutes depending on the direction the game took. Walking around inquisitively, bothering humans, scratching up furniture, and taking a nap can only be extrapolated so far across a game before the player becomes bored. The challenge for this title was to develop systems, concepts, and a world around the kitty to keep the sense of intrigue and progression feeling worthwhile, while also maintaining the obvious expectations a player would have from playing as a cat versus a traditional human. So let's see how the development team at Blue 12 did in navigating these different but important pathways. By the way, spoilers await you in this video, so feel free to come back later if this one's on your radar. Since playing as a kitty is the cat's meow with Stray, let's start by looking at how playing as a feline is distinctive from the traditional video game human hero. Games like Rain World have you playing as a creature that's similar to a cat, and others like Night in the Woods have you assuming the role of a kitten humanoid, but there really hasn't been a title that looks to put you into the paws of one with a sense of realism. Until now. Stray's movement systems and environmental interactions stem directly from how cats of the real world move and behave. You'll slink along, complete impressive burst jumps to higher elevations, nap, reach places you don't belong, love on humans by brushing up against them, scratch everything in sight, and of course, do those annoying cat things like walking on pianos and laptops. Hell, there's a button just for meowing on command. All of these feline customs are translated so well into Stray using beautiful animation work that really mimics our fuzzy furballs. Honestly, it's quite impressive considering this is animation work that's relatively unexplored in the medium. Sure, there are a few instances in which the illusion of realism shows its cracks, but I'd say most of the time this Stray behaved in accordance with what you'd expect as a cat owner or lover. And that was a critical detail to nail in a game whose pre-release buzz was focused solely on playing as a cat. And I'm happy to say they did it well. The illusion is taken further by the ways you're permitted to interact with the environment. I of course already mentioned a bunch of things you can do, many of which are rather inconsequential to the overall adventure, but still critical in creating the feeling that you and the cat are one and the same. In other words, doing things like meowing whenever you feel like it, or scratching rugs, or stopping to take a cat nap isn't going to progress the story being told here, but yet I still found myself taking time to do them just because it felt authentic to the character. These behaviors make the cat feel like such a compelling character because of the parallel imagery it inspires in our minds. The comparisons to reality are clear and help provide foundation and grounding even in a world as alien as the one in Stray. 
Another factor that contributes to building a realistic cat sim is the strength of the level design. Slinking through the seedy underbellies of the city from ground level offers a perspective we're not used to normally seeing. Interacting at eye level just isn't an option when you're a four-legged animal. Unless of course you perch yourself up on a table or chair, clumsily knocking things over in the process at times. Meanwhile, your perspective on the world around you is manipulated by your size, offering up a sensation that you're in a world much, much bigger than yourself. Of course, this doesn't create a sense of powerlessness because you play as such a dexterous creature capable of scaling just about any obstacle. Climbing tall apartment buildings and navigating series of sewer pipes comes natural and fits right into the fantasy while also making the world feel approachable regardless of your small stature. Still, most of the gameplay I've described so far consists of relatively simple button inputs. While you'll spend the most amount of time exploring and climbing, there's still a fair bit of variety within the gameplay. Whether it's chase sequences, where you outrun these little alien blobs, or solving relatively easy puzzles. Other times you'll be asked to avoid robot enemies capable of neutralizing any organic life it comes across. There's even a bit of click and point gameplay elements as well, considering there are times where you must find and swap items with NPCs to secure the necessary item for progression. These bits, along with dialogue and collectibles, creates a well-rounded experience that doesn't see any one element overstay its welcome across the game's roughly four-hour campaign. So, it's these four elements, the animation work, the behaviors, the level design, and the gameplay variety that allows for the fantasy of playing as a cat to be as good as it is in Stray. The game takes the cat's intelligence to the extreme as it behaves not only in accordance with survival instinct, but also using rational thought, such as problem solving. This was of course a necessary endeavor, given the player is human, not feline, but it did get me thinking more about the nature of animals. I've always been curious about the differences in human intelligence versus that of animals. The fact that animals don't have a spoken language that we can speak prevents us from asking questions outright but many studies have shown that certain species are capable of higher levels of thought, nothing paralleling that of a human, but certainly above the norm. Stray goes forward with the assumption that animals, cats in particular, are capable of figuring things out. And while, again, it's a large leap to construct a story about how a cat saves a ton of lives using human technology and critical thinking skills, it just works because of how often the game provides the player with instances to do just as a cat does. So go ahead, knock over those cans of paint just because you can, you silly little furball. To me, the only misstep in the design and presentation of Stray's protagonist is the fact that you can't customize it. I was really hoping that players would be afforded the opportunity to use a character creator to design their perfect cat. Perhaps the physics and animations would have needed more development time to justify this, but in a perfect world, it would have been a great inclusion. I mean, I just got lucky in the fact that this cat they designed looks fairly similar to my finest feline friend but I know many others will be disappointed not to incorporate their own fuzzballs into the adventure. Luckily, the modding community seems to be on this, so I'm sure you can find something. Pivoting back to the point I raised at the video's beginning, playing as a cat alone, even if it is super well done, isn't necessarily enough to handle the weight of an entire game. And I think that's something that Blue 12 Studio really understood, as the world they've constructed here is full of mystery, atmosphere, and even a bit of charm. The events of the game kick off with you and some feline companions strolling through a seemingly abandoned structure, perhaps on their way to a meal or just for the fun of it. A cruel twist of fate sees your kitten plummeting into a black gulch, falling directly into a derelict city, devoid of sunlight, illuminated only by the piercing artificial rays of neon signs and the dingy dirty light protruding from street lamps. 
it's clear something has gone very wrong here. Gross acidic liquid covers the streets, there's abandoned buildings everywhere, and not a single human is nearby. It doesn't take long for a hostile alien species to pursue you until you escape and meet up with a friendly robot who dreams of recovering his memories. From here, you'll meet up with a series of humanoid robots who all display elements of humanity, whether it's in how they socialize, trade goods, play music, or serve different roles within the society. They do so with an undeniable level of charm. It's clear we're dealing with an apocalyptic setting, but the questions begin to arise. What happened to the humans? What are those alien blob creatures? Who created these robots? Why do they behave like humans? What's the backstory of our robotic companion? The answers to these questions come with time. Some are vague, others are direct, but all are satisfying to uncover. The end goal in Stray is to reach the outside, the area where you began the game. It's an objective shared by a few characters, including the cat, the robotic companion B12, and a series of robots named the Outsiders. For the feline friend, the outside represents a chance to reunite with the others, a simple but very human objective. For the others though, the outside represents a calling card, something draws them to it, like a moth to the flame, the curiosity of the unknown, and the unflappable feeling that the past is tied to it. Okay, another fair warning, this next section is really going to get into spoilers, so if you want to skip ahead, go ahead and do so, but let's move on. Anyway, at one point in your journey, you reach a deep underground hideout where a few robots live in peace. It's here where your B12 remembers that he was once human that he uploaded himself into a network in hopes of escaping mortality through data. Towards the end, you learn that a plague is what wiped out mankind, but many inventions were left behind in hopes that humanity would carry on. Plants that grow without direct sunlight, a man-made bacteria capable of eating garbage to eliminate waste, and of course a network where people could upload their consciousness in hopes of everlasting life. These secrets and more were locked away in walled off cities where the dream was that people could live in peace until life on the surface was hospitable once more. Things didn't pan out that way and most of these robots don't even realize that they were once human. It's a blessing and a curse in different ways. Bringing human consciousness into a robot is a sci-fi trope as old as time but it remains an interesting one nonetheless, because it gets us thinking more critically about the nature of humanity. What does it mean to be human, and how far can that definition be stretched? Stray finds new and interesting ways to approach this topic while offering up a relatively positive portrayal of this notion. Unlike in games such as Soma that explores the horrific sides of these human to machine transfers, Stray chooses to allow humanity's best qualities to shine through despite the transition from flesh to metal. The robots, despite living in rough conditions, endure by finding meaning in their lives, whether it's taking on jobs and roles in the society, or forming relationships with one another, or finding ways to push onward using humanity's greatest tool, hope. The ending even affirms that these humans aren't slaves to the past and can probably carry onward with their own lives and cultures without having to bear the weight of knowing what was lost. That's because the title ends with you reaching the control room, the highest point in the massive sealed off city, where you and B12 are able to retract the roof, revealing sunlight to the robots for the first time while killing off many zerks in the process. These alien creatures were a consequence of humanity's attempts to mess with nature by creating a trash-eating bacteria. Over the course of millions of years, they morphed into creatures of their own, capable of eliminating any creature, flesh or metal, in its path. They created a massive obstacle that the robots were unable to overcome, breeding stagnation in these communities and necessitating a police state to rule. 
Of course, even in this dark era, hope endured, and was delivered through the ambitions of the outsiders and the cat who pushed on endlessly to reach the outside world. And in the end, that hope prevailed. So yeah, this game is able to deliver on its narrative using compelling world building, strong atmosphere, lots of mystery, and an ultimately life-affirming story about the nature of humanity and hope. The best part is, this game is doing really well, meaning that unanswered topics can be addressed in further DLC or even a sequel. Blue 12 had told a satisfying story while still leaving roots open to explore this world even more. It's excellent. Finally, there's something to be said about the level of artistic cohesion within the presentation of Stray. The grungy apocalyptic look is apparent in every level you traverse, regardless of how different they are in locale. Murky sewers, abandoned buildings, dirty factories, and the shady but alluring streets of a neon-based city all blend seamlessly into one another with no load screen transitions between them to pull you out of things. It allowed for diversity in environmental exploration while not robbing the world of feeling cohesive. In particular, the lighting work is handled very well, helping to contribute to that sense of realism. I also appreciated the fog and smoke that slowly drifted through the alleyways and such. There's also just a distinct sense of mystery to some of the levels you traverse. Some are creepy, and some raise questions of how this location got into the state it is now, or how it maintained the state it was already in. It's all well done and is indicative of a cohesive vision shared between everyone working on the game. To be honest, I would have loved to see some of the concept art for this game. I bet it was sick as hell. Just an all-around, impressive-looking game with smart sound work that really elevates all of the presentational elements. A slam dunk. All things considered, it's no wonder that Stray is seeing the success that it is. It's a title that overcame its already impressive tagline. By delivering feline gameplay that mirrors the cats of our real world, the game lures in any cat lover with the promise of getting to cause kitten chaos and seeing the world as one of our pets does. However, they ensured that many players wouldn't put the game down after a few minutes of what could have been very gimmicky gameplay by creating a haunting but hopeful world full of intrigue. Despite not having a single fleshy human, Stray is able to touch on the themes of humanity as well as any other heavy hitter that tackles the subject. They also do so in a way that affirms that enduring sense of hope that keeps us moving forward even in the darkest times. This light-hearted approach to the subject matter, paired up with a mysterious and grossly beautiful world, allows for a game that excels in everything it's trying to do, while also leaving room for future content. Ultimately, the best way to say it is that you'll come for the cat and stay for the story. Okay, and maybe for the cat too. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this look at PlayStation's latest exclusive with Stray. As you can tell, I really liked this one, and honestly, I don't think any element of this title missed the mark. My only issue was that I fell through the map once, but that's like literally it. I can't think of any other complaints except maybe the lack of a character creator. Anyway, yeah, go check this game out. I mean, you get to play as a cat after all. If you're new to the channel, consider checking out some of my other videos. I've already reviewed a bunch of titles this year, Many of those videos are longer than this one too. Speaking of which, I just uploaded a three month long project looking at the eight mainline Halo games that I'm really proud of, so please go watch that. I'd also encourage you to not only subscribe as we work towards a thousand subs, which by the way, we're only like 30 off at this point, so that's amazing, but also come check out the Nope Nap NARP Discord channel so that we can all get to know each other more and talk more about these great games. It's called the Discord of NopeNap NARP, and you can find the link to it in the description below. Also, you can find me on Twitter at NopeNap NARP, so come see me there. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for more. Follow me on Twitter at NopeNapNarp and follow that Discord. Come, join us, you must. And as always, have a nice day, guys, and take care.